real quick, I actually recorded this episode on Tuesday um, before I found out about the Andre Duxon incident with the trademark in Russia. If you are curious at all about what's going on with that, I will have an extra message at the end of this video uh, explaining just a little bit of details on that. So stay tuned for that if that's what you're here for. Ahoy hoy, fancy seeing you here. I uh, wrote a tale for the SCP Wiki, uh, I think it was Sunday? Yeah, it was on Sunday. And uh, it's already posted, I, mean, I came up with it, had a few hours free, wrote it, posted it. It's doing pretty well, I think it's close to plus 30 now. And I thought, why not read it for the channel? This is the kind of thing I do anyway, like it's, it's one of these sort of monologue-y tales that I've done before, and I thought, why not do another one? And I'm this time around, it's actually already written it on the wiki, so I don't have to ask you whether or not I should write it down or not. <laughs> anyway, um, I will say this. Uh, there are... The subject of addiction and suicide comes up, so if these are problems for you, maybe skip this video. I hate saying that because, well, it means less money for me, but I think it's important that you know what you're getting into. It's not serious, it's not super heavy, it's a little heavy at the end, but it's not uh, too bad, but it is It is there, it exists. So, anyway, let's get started. The absolute worst thing I ever saw. That's actually pretty easy. Uh, you know, after I finished up with SCP-245, I didn't have a job, and I was bouncing around for a while when the hires up tried to you know, figure out what to do with me. And for about a year in 07, I was working in human resources at Site 88. Our office was a adjunct site in Bay Manette, like right next to the daycare department. Yeah, we had a daycare department at the SCP Foundation. I mean, there were HR guys on site as well, like obviously, but we handled the bulk of the paperwork and processing off site because we have to deal with the families of our employees a lot of the time. And also, since there was already a child care department, it made more sense. You know, which obviously, these days, we kind of work a little bit differently, but we still provide child care to employees. It makes, them, it makes a huge amount of sense. Like, any good company knows that people miss work because they're kids all the time. So if you can provide some sort of an opportunity for them to have child care where they don't have to, like, pay for a babysitter like that's a huge benefit for people and it keeps people from quitting sometimes there was this one woman and i always remembered her because she had this like real haughty stance every time she came in and like you know she puffed out her chest and she'd come and demand this and demand that or you know just drop her kids off uh, sometimes both at the same time she had two like an adorable six-year-old a nine-year-old boy uh she was never rude she was definitely proud and always a little demanding. And her husband was one of the MTF agents at Site 88. He was 53, you know, a couple years from the optional retirement age and seven years off of mandatory retirement. Well, not re retirement, but a reassignment. I only met him a few times, like at a few company functions. But it was like he was leaking sunshine out of his ears, like every time I talked to him. He says loud, boisterous, but never a bully. I, I should say that. It's hard to really define a person like that. Uh, he'd been with the Foundation for almost 30 years, and he'd been like that the whole time, according to everyone who I ever talked to about him. Like, no one ever had a bad thing to say about this guy. And then he got reassigned to 110 Montauk. Now, I should say, it wasn't a punishment. He didn't do anything wrong. It was just a matter of accounting. My boss always used to call it that. When, like, a critical project was short on people, it was just a matter of accounting. Like, that made it any better. I remember the moment the guy got told, because I could see through the window. He didn't argue or anything. He just, well, he did shrink a little. I was used to seeing that. Like, HR has that effect on people, regardless of what the reassignment is. But he came back a month later, after like a full course of amnestics. It was like he left something behind. I saw him next, I think, at the 4th of July company event with his MTF buddies. They were laughing about an old mission. But I remember looking in his eyes and the spark, like, what made him him? It was gone. 
I think if that was all, it would have been fine. But a month later, he took a bullet to the knee in a firefight with the insurgency. And they stuck him on desk duty during his recovery. And, you know, they prescribed Percocet for the pain after the surgery. Nobody thought a lot about that at the time. I mean, the guy was a drinker, but it was nothing serious. And besides, he had a family. So even if it was unlikely, we figured the guy was going to work as hard as he could to get back into the field. But the problem, really, with treating addiction like a moral failing is that you could never see how a good man could end up strung out on pills. I mean, we got better because of stuff exactly like this. But that was like the mid-2000s. We just weren't there yet. So he failed the drug test two months later for Oxy and Vicodin, and neither of those were ever prescribed to him by anybody. So we put him on supervised leave for a few months. That was literally all we did, by the way. No drug treatment programs, no counseling, no mandatory anything. We just put him on leave, told him to get his shit together, and cut him off from the Percocet. He came back just a little bit before Christmas, totally clean, passed all of his tests, my boss figured that was the end of it. Guy was a good soldier, close to retirement. We'd just keep him chained to a desk from now on until he hit 55, and then we would make that voluntary retirement a bit more forced. And then a week later, he failed another drug test for heroin. We put him on leave again, this time without pay, and my boss started talking about how we couldn't keep the guy on the payroll. I mean, he used the word degenerate a few more than once, but... Uh, I went home that day, and uh, he tried to use the roof of his mouth as a pistol silencer. My boss said the problem had solved itself. And then the guy's wife came in with her kids, and thankfully he's the one that had to deal with them. I didn't hear exactly what had happened until afterwards, but because he had violated the terms of his employment and he was on an unpaid suspension... Uh, he'd lost his pension, and his life insurance was voided because it was a suicide. Let me just say, real quick, I disagree with that policy. I sort of understand why it existed. I mean, suicide is serious, and for lack of a better word, contagious. Site 42 lost half a dozen people just last year before they got the situation under control, and back in 07, part of our policy was that if you killed yourself, we would find excuses so your family got nothing. That was supposed to be a deterrent because suicide and depression is a serious problem at the SP Foundation. It's the worst possible solution to it, but it's a solution. And so there this woman was, like, like always, standing tall and puffed up, and then she just broke. I mean, it was like it was like she'd been replaced by a smaller version of herself. She just sh shrank into herself. I mean, she just lost her husband, and I'm betting that she hadn't processed it yet, much less everything else my boss told her. I mean, we got the kids out of the room, and I actually stayed with the wife for the rest of the day while she tried to get herself together. And, and then I put in for a transfer the next day. Thank you very much. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, it's the kind of tale that I have usually kicking around in my head every once in a while, and I sometimes write it and sometimes don't. <sighs> anyway, if you like the video, please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell after that. That way you'll be notified the minute I upload new videos. And if you want to support this kind of content, head on over to patreon.com forward slash dsumerian and pledge at any level. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Tuesday. So there's going to be an actual video about the trademark situation in Russia probably next week. I want to do it as soon as possible, but I also don't want to do it until the donation link for the legal fund is up. And yes, there is a, going to need to be a legal fund because the SCP Foundation wiki is going to have to take legal action against somebody who has an illegal trademark in Russia and is trying to enforce it first on the SCP uh, Russian branch. If they can do it to the Russian branch, they may be able to do it to others. It's unlikely, but it's still possible, and it becomes more possible if we let this stand. 
Plus, the Russian branch didn't do anything other than write Creative Commons SCP content, so they deserve to be protected regardless. The donation link should be available sometime later today. I'm recording this in the morning on Thursday, but this should be uh, either later today or tomorrow. Either way, there will be a spot in my description. I'm going to take my own Patreon link out. There will be a spot in my description that will link to the legal fund. I'll probably tweet about it if you're following me on Twitter. Um, I'll make a community post about it too um, because I don't think I'm going to be able to fit a video about this topic into my regular schedule for this week. So it'll just be tacked on to this video and I will do a hopefully very detailed video uh, next week. I might do it on Tuesday and move dank memes to Thursday, uh, depending on how long it takes for me to put that together. I may do it the other way around. Anyway, let's get to the rest of the outro. Oh, and Mary, uh, yeah, I, I know you skipped hitting the subscribe button. I want you to go down there and hit the subscribe button. Like, this is not a joke. I need you to do that. Otherwise, how are you going to know when I put out a new video?